Welcome to Reinforce 2025. Uh, I'm James Ferguson, a Principal Security SA, and joined with Aaron Brown. Aaron? You wanna... Hey everyone, Aaron Brown, uh, Gen AI Solution Architect here in AWS, and today we're gonna be talking about Model con Context Protocol Security. Our agenda today is we're gonna go through introductions, which we just did. We're gonna talk about the context, the problem, solution, and then finally a reference demo and a way forward. Again, uh, James Ferguson and Aaron. Good to meet you guys. Uh, MCP has emerged as a universal protocol for AI agentic tool integration. The protocol launched by Anthropic in November 2024 is now adopted by OpenAI, um, Google, uh, AWS, many, many others. You want to take? Yeah, I, I think with the MCP, the real aha moment has been that we're able to now give agents, or really these models, now tools that they can invoke for external systems. For context, this was released back in around the November timeframe, mostly for local desktop usage for the, the product cloud desktop. It's since evolved as everyone's seen the utility as an abstraction layer for enabling tool use to now in remote environments. So that's really the context and understanding of where it started just a few, in the past 12 months to where we are now moving to today. Awesome. So uh, a couple gaps that have uh, kind of emerged on the MCP protocol side, uh, especially around security vulnerabilities. I'm sure many of you are aware of those. Uh, every server implements OAuth uh, and forces developers to build um, you know, authentication repeatedly with inconsistent uh, security styles and, and methods. Uh, there's no role separation at all between uh, the OAuth uh, server and authorization and the resource server itself, which is part of MCP. There's zero tool verification. In other words, there's no way to verify tools themselves, at least currently. Um, there's all or nothing access. In other words, granting one tool permission uh, exposes the entire server's capabilities across MCP. Uh, there's no observability layer. In other words, the ability to do governance, uh, audits, et cetera. And then there's missing approval workflows. In other words, AI agents execute critical actions without human oversight actions at all. A couple other things around design flaws create multiple attack services. Um, you know, being a security expert uh, for years, um, these are very common. Uh, we've seen this since the, you know, first uh, step of the internet, right? Uh, 80s, 90s to today. Authentication and authorization, impersonization, uh, you know, OAuth flows, privilege abuse, um, tool interaction risks, you know, uh, whether you're running SOA, uh, APIs, uh, et cetera, going back to three stack architectures into Gen AI today, same thing. Uh, you have prompt injections, you have tool poisoning, uh, you have command injection, you have infrastructure weaknesses, right? Uh, in other words, um, DOS attacks, supply chain compromises, authentication bypass. Um, those are all kind of real attack surface issues with MCP. And then also indirect manipulation, in other words, host compromise uh, leading to unsafe tool invocation. So today we're gonna talk about uh, a way forward. Uh, Aaron is one of the builders here at AWS, so uh, it's an honor to be here with him. Um, he and, and many of us have been working on the MCP kind of security architecture to help centralize infrastructure security and control. So uh, he's come up with a thing called MCP Gateway, and we're going to have him talk a little bit more about that. Aaron. Yeah, and I think before, so we're going to show a reference open source solution that um, some folks at AWS, like Ahmed Aurora and others, have been, have been leading on. But if there's one key takeaway before we talk about the actual reference solution, it's that the trend we're seeing now of MCP in terms of security is how can we centralize effectively through a gateway and a registry, similar to what we saw for the past one to two years with LLM gateways and also other services as well. Um, so, so, and with that, now in the next slide, the reference implementation here, and this will all have QR codes, but we're going to dive through the next five minutes in this, is an open source implementation of an MCP gateway and registry that's this current code repo that we're going to go through is hosted on the um, AWS Agentic community, which is a AWS open source um, Git, Git repo. And what this solution is is a unified MCP gateway that's through a scalable in, uh, Nginx entry point that accesses as a central gateway for self-hosted MCP, remote MCP servers, whether that be in Fargate, EC2, et cetera. This gateway service is centralized. It also enables logging, and we also have authentication built in. And we're gonna dive into really more what that means in the next slide. Um, awesome. So really, you know, the challenge of MCP is it requires traditionally in the current state uh, each server to handle auth on its own. That's not really unmanageable at enterprise scale. 
So again, in this solution is a centralized gateway and registry that handles all authentication. The main component here that you see in green is, is the gateway. That's the Nginx reverse proxy that intercepts every request. The other really important part here is the, the off server that we can see in the bottom part of the, the green box there. And that off server is a dedicated service that validates credentials from whatever IDP we have. In, in the configuration we have today, we have Cognito. We also have this service, which is open source, that connect to other IDPs, whether that be Okta, et cetera. We also have a registry, and this registry provides both a web UI uh, for humans and an MCP server for dynamic tool discovery itself. And we'll talk a little bit more what that means in a, in a quick demo. MCP servers themselves remain stateless with zero code for off. And the identity providers, again, we allow the ability to configure any IDP, and we're gonna go through two different authentication mechanisms, whether it be user session cookie or M2M. Um, and really, when we talk about how an agent wants to call a tool, and we're gonna go through an example, the way that first works is an agent will connect to that central entry point, uh, whether that be through the transport layer of streamable HTTP or SSE. The Nginx receives that request with the auth headers, JWT or session cookie, and then Ingen main, uh, Nginx makes an internal call to the auth server to validate those credentials. The auth server checks if Cognito returns the allowed scopes based on those fine-grained access controls. And then Nginx adds those scopes as the reverse proxies to the appropriate MCP server. And then MCP server then runs locally in a container or, remote, or, um, or remotely in EKS or Lambda. The tool then executes over that persistent connection, over that transport layer, and the response is then streamed back to the agent. And really what this means is we're separating effectively the auth component from the MCP server itself. So the, agent and the MCP server and that auth mechanism are disconnected, but still happening. Yeah, and just to be clear, the uh, slide you see now might seem a little small or busy, uh, you know, for, for the audience. So uh, the GitHub repo we're gonna share with you at the end of this uh, has that information on it as well. So just so you know. Yeah, this is a lot to look at. This is the uh, auth flow. <laughs> We're gonna, again, all of this is open source. We have links we can talk after. I'm gonna talk through this, the two auth paths with either, either using M2M or uh, user session uh, cookies. With M2M, this is where the agent has its own identity um, so for monitoring through the workflow. An agent then accepts the credentials from Cognito with JW2 with those embedded scopes directly in. Um, and then with the session cookies, user groups like MCP admin are mapped to the same scopes using a scopes file that we actually have configured in the solution. And these scopes are composed at three different levels. We have a server access, this is for can the agent access the server. Method access, can you call a tool or just list them. And then tool level access. So within a specific server, within a method, can you access that specific tool? Because servers can have different, different tools as well. Um, and now we're gonna go through two quick examples of what this solution looks like. We're first gonna start off with the agent user identity mode. So in that previous offload, we're gonna zoom in now to using those session cookies um, where an agent is able to act on behalf of a user using their Cognito identity in this, in this demo and groups memberships for authorization. Now what this enables is for your proof of key exchange to be enabled on the app client itself and we're gonna showcase through a, um, a hosted UI how you can do that appropriate callback to the URL, how we can then pull back that session cookie and actually persist and then actually make the reference agent call. So when we play this demo, what you're looking at here is the admin login page of the MCP gateway dashboard. This is just basic auth right now. This could be for uh, configured for actual SSO. But for right now, what you're looking at is a dashboard of the available MCP servers, toggles, which effectively tools are within, an, uh, within each MCP server itself. You can turn them on or off. You can modify them. You can think about this as a central gateway for maybe developers who want to know what specific MCP servers they have access to um, or as administrators to manage that access. You're seeing myself here launch for that user session off a simple tool to enable the agent, or sorry, to enable me to do a callback to log into Cognito. You're seeing me pass in credentials of my username and password. I get an authentication, accept request. Then I have now 
that session cookie then on my, on my device itself. And now I can go and actually ask a question. You just saw me, this kind of happened a little fast. <laughs> but in the question above, I asked a simple lane graph agent. I pointed it directly to the HTTP, the local, the, uh, the MCP gateway itself. I asked it a specific question of what time is it in Ichan, China? And right now, this agent itself, another component we have in here, is the ability to find other tools within the registry itself that it has access to. So this agent doesn't, for instance, have access directly to the time server that we have in here. But it does have access to a tool called Intelligent Tool Finder that you'll see on the line above there that I'll highlight soon. And then with that Intelligent Tool Finder, it effectively does semantic search to say what other tools do I have that I do have access to based on my specific scopes that I can now actually perform this task. Now you can see what we're scrolling through and we'll scroll down. The agent actually went through, it asked what time it is, it identified, it used the intelligent tool finder because it did not have the actual uh, a tool to access it but it had access to this one tool to search for tools. It had also access to perform that and it retrieved that back and was able to actually identify the current time server and then actually come back with the specific time for when I ran this. Again, what we're showing here is using that user um, user session cookie with me upstream identifying uh, and logging in and getting a session cookie, that being authenticated from um, our service, it being returned the scopes that are, it's allowed to perform, and all of that auth happening in the MCP gateway and registry service itself. On the next slide, um, we're going to show, if we go one slide more, we're now going to talk about a very same exact demo in terms of a question, but now using a different authentication scheme. We're using M2M or machine to machine. That's where effectively, again, we're using token requests, tokens using in our client credentials. We're using a JWT um, token itself that's embedded within the scopes. And we do that token validation through the auth server itself, where the JWT signature and claims are validated, and that scope enforcement is access based on those token scopes itself. Again, I think the key takeaway is this M2M flow, typically if you remove the word MCP, it's not too different than what we're all typically used to. Um, the flow generally remains the same, it's just now we're giving it to a, a specific machine identity now. And the next slide, we're now just gonna do a, the same exact demo, but you're gonna see, I've already loaded some environmental variables for this demo here. You can see in the top we passed our client ID, our client secret, our user pool, and I asked that same exact question. We can see how now we're using the authentication mechanism of M2M with specific tokens from our Cognito ID, our user pool. We can see we found the credentials for act, um, itself, and then it was able to identify the, that same exact agent, the list of tools it had available based on a specific identity. Um, and what it was authorized to perform, it was able to hit the gateway and do that authentication, able to find out what it's authorized to perform. And this will go through the same at level access where we can see it has access to an intelligent tool finder. It does not have access to something called current time server, which is the time server to retrieve time. But then it does that semantic search to actually search and identify which other tools does it have access to and pulls those back, finds the time server, and ultimately, we'll get the time uh, for this as well. Um, so these are just two examples to summarize to showcase how you can do user session cookie and M2M off through a centralized MCP gateway and registry to both perform authentication and authorization, along with establishing identities, and then also showing some of the infrastructure components of how you can think about dealing with a registry for doing things, services like intelligent tool finding, et cetera, all of them with having some form of having fine-grained access controls. Perfect. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. So um, a couple of things that we're, we're doing here at AWS, we have an a open source community we've launched uh, recently. Um, and so if you guys are interested in joining uh, that community, we're more than uh, happy to have you join us. Uh, we have uh, bi-weekly meetings. Uh, I lead the uh, STO, or single-threaded owner, for security, along with others uh, like Aaron, who lead the builder experience side. And so uh, we'd love to have you join us, uh, be part of that. If you don't have the time, completely understand. 
but that Agenta community is open source on GitHub. And we're gonna give you some uh, QR codes here in a moment. You can go to that. You can download the solution that Aaron just gave you. By the way, he ran that on his uh, airline <laughs> while he was uh, flying. So uh, just to show you the speed and the ability of that, that solution to work regardless of where you're at is, is kind of amazing. So again, um, you know, OAuth 2.1 spec improvements with dynamic identities. A lot of us have seen write-ups about that. CISA and, and many others uh, are talking about token exchange, uh, which is the OAuth 2.1 spec. The need for agents to be able to make decisions and then get different scopes of identities as they're making those decisions, definitely needed. And that's kind of the new path forward. So again, OAuth 2.1 spec, and then also di dynamic identities themselves are, are definitely needed. So part of what the solution went through with the MDM uh, with Cognito um, gives that solution uh, side uh, idea to you as a, as a customer or as a user of AWS services, but you can also use open source uh, you know, identities as well. It's completely up to you on which you want to use. Um, MCP registry development enables centralized server discovery with metadata validation. Uh, agent graphs and interactive workflows require enhanced permission scoping and behavioral monitoring, just some takeaways uh, from today. Industry convergence on secure by design principles for AI agent deployments is still very nascent, but still being worked on. You're seeing that across the industry. A lot of people involved in that as well. I, I think if it's one thing, maybe just add on to that, is I think the general trend, as James mentioned, is a movement towards registries, um, similar to what we've seen now with LLM gateways. And that while we do have a, a reference solution here, which you, you can all, I recommend taking a look at, fork it, look at our roadmap, feel free to contribute. Um, there's also still some really interesting questions that we're all still thinking through in terms of, for instance, different scope levels for tool level access. A shell tool is very different than um, a current time tool, how do you deal with managing scopes at a tool level is an interesting concept as well. I guess needless to say, this, this field is rapidly evolving, so you know, while it is evolving, we do think these constructs like gateways and registries are going to be what we're going to see probably even 12 to 18 months from now, similar to what we see now with LLM gateways. Yeah, so a couple, <clears throat> a couple links we, we provide for you. The MCP specification from Anthropic directly uh, that launched last November, as we already suggested. Uh, OAuth 2.1 spec, um, and then also the MCP gateway and registry that uh, we just demoed uh, is on this page. Uh, I'll give you a moment to take a, a picture of that if you'd like. Uh, and then we also have some other additional, um, you know, kind of tools for you. So MCP security tools, um, there's, a, there's a Stitch MCP scanning tool, uh, very well done, open source. There's Invariant Labs MPP, MCP scanner. It goes through all of the tools, for example, scans, does really thread analysis, et cetera. By the way, you can also build that with Agentic systems in addition. So it's great to see, you know, kind of the use cases out there in the wild. And then lastly, the Agentic AI threats and mitigations from the OWASP community and the top 10. I definitely recommend you review that. Uh, in my opinion, that's more, uh, you know, kind of detailed than the original OWASP top 10 for Gen AI itself. So um, again, uh, all tools that uh, we definitely recommend you guys take a look at. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. I think that's... I think that's about all we have. We're, we're here to take questions uh, on the side once, once the session's over. And again, thanks again for joining. Yeah. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank you. it.